Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part two of the 3D printed vacuum casting series. In this part, I actually casted some rings and I show and discuss the results. I won't go through the vacuum casting process again. I made a nifty little animation in part one. If you'd like to know how the process works, go back and watch the intro of part one and then come back to this video. Now, let's jump into it. All right, guys, check it out. So this is the invested flask. What the so it's been sitting for uh, about two hours now since I invested it this morning at like six and let's unwrap it. That's just masking tape. Seems to have held it kind of leaked through in a few places but that shouldn't be an issue. And now when we pull off the bottom here we should see the sprue of the model that's inside. So that's the sprue, just under that is the model inside of here. So now what we have to do is put this upside down into the burnout oven and get rid of all this stuff. This is the burnout oven that I have and it can go up to 1050 Celsius. It's important that the oven has the ability to program a temperature profile, otherwise you'll be running to the oven every few hours to reset the temperature. It would be a bonus to have control of the gradients of the warming, but it's not 100% required. This oven only has two temperature steps with a delay start timer. Ideally, you would have around four with a delay start timer. The delay start timer just allows the oven to wait for some period of time before starting the profile. This is useful if you invest the flask, throw it in the oven, and then just start the program. Now, about the burnout profiles. This is the part that was hardest for me to navigate due to the lack of good information online. The resin which you use has its own burnout profile, in my case from Formlabs, and this is how it looks. They also mention that it's for a specific type of invest. Now, I was not able to get my hands on the invest which Formlabs recommends, so do I follow the Formlabs profile or the profile from the invest I have? Well, I went ahead and followed the recommendation from the invest manufacturer, in my case Certus, for the type of invest which I have. Their line, um, or the invest, it's called Unicast. This worked great, but as I mentioned before, my oven can only do two temperature steps, so having a profile with four is a bit of a pain. I did some more digging and found a special notes on Certus website, which specifically recommends a different profile when working with 3D printed resins. This was for their Optima line of invests and not for the Unicast. But hey, how different can they be? So in the second casting, shown later in the video, I went with this profile. It worked great and required nearly no intervention from my side to change the temperature of the oven. So it's important that the oven has a good um, air circulation because the resin actually turns directly from solid to gas, so it kind of burns off. And on this oven there's a little fan in the back which goes to this chimney here, which then I've connected to this exhaust fan which is filtering the smoke out and then dumping that air outside. So we got our vacuum pump here, got a little fire brick here, got the vacuum casting machine there. That I'll connect up to the vacuum pump. Got my crucible tongs here. Crucible's already loaded in there with our piece of brass. The burnout process is right around in the middle, so it's at uh, 450 degrees now, and it's got one hour 38 left of this step, and then the final step is going to be at 750 degrees for some hours. All right, well here's attempt one. It didn't even get through the 450 degree uh, burnout. You can see in there quite a bit of the model actually burned out. So it does work, but I think the plaster was a bit too thin on the top here and it blew it out. So I think there was, yeah, maybe five millimeters or even a bit less between the very top edge and uh, and the model. So. First attempt, not a success. I'm wondering if the, the first one failed because the, the piece was too big. And that this, I mean, this resin is designed for jewelry and not big pieces. So let's see if this does anything. All right, there it is all invested. It's kind of a hectic process, so I couldn't manage to film it. I used the vacuum casting machine here to get the gas out of it or to get the air out of it. 750 degrees, it's got three hours left and inside looks like that. 
pretty toasty. So we'll let that cook for another three hours and then we'll be able to cast some metal. Alright, shit is getting real here. The 750 degree burnout cycle is done. Now it's cooling down to casting temperature, which in our case is 615. I already did one test pour of the brass just to see how it pours and kind of how it behaves. This moon looking thing came out. I just poured it into this little crucible here. Yeah, next step when this, uh, this gets down to 615, I think I'm gonna wait about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to make sure the, the center of the flask is cooled down. Get this guy heated up, so this takes around one hour to melt the brass. And um, then... Alright, so I'm gonna narrate a bit here because this part is a little bit hectic to focus on everything and to be talking at the same time. So, the brass is melted and uh, this is the very first time I'm doing any of this, so I had my wife film it because I didn't manage to have enough brain power left to operate a camera and do all of this in parallel. So the first step, I pulled the flask out of the burnout oven, trying not to drop it, ginger carefully. Then I dropped it into the vacuum machine and started up the vacuum pump. Actually, it was already running, I just connected it at this point and now it's pulling a vacuum through the plaster. Um, so now we pull the, the molten brass out of the oven. There you can see the smoke and the kind of flames that were jumping around that's burning um, zinc, which is not real great to breathe, so make sure you do this with a respirator or with ventilation. Here we pour it in, nothing really spectacular. Uh, if your mold is not 100% dry, this is the part where it explodes. So if you didn't do your 750 degree burnout long enough and remove every little bit of water out of it, it would explode here. So in general, make sure you wear something on your face and uh, leather apron or whatever. Um, so after the button is no longer red, give it about, I don't know, five minutes to cool off, then you can dunk it in a tank of, or a bucket of cold water and that'll kind of blow all the plaster out and give you your finished casting. Oh crap, it worked. Why is it white? By the way, big thank you to my wife for putting up with this shit. I'm sure she would rather be doing anything else than this at 22 on a Sunday night. The detail, so we got a couple of problems, a couple of things going on. First, if you look really close, you can see one, for example, right there, right there. Those are little bubbles. And those are bubbles that were not vacuumed out of the Invest before I poured it. So I think the problem with that is the vacuum pump that I have is pulling about minus 800 millibars. So it's not quite reaching minus one bar. So a perfect vacuum. And I think because of that, there's still some rest bubbles left in the invest. Um, the next thing is, I'm not sure the sprue design was really correct. And in this sample here, so if you can see, you probably can't, but I can. Um, so the surface finish of this central sprue here is actually really nice. All through here, through this detail, it's quite nice. And then right to about here, or right at this point, it starts to get not nice this direction. And about the same distance from here, right there. And from that point to about right here, on both sides, there's a section where the the surface finish is really not that nice and I think that has to do with this should be where the metal met so it probably filled up down here went this way went this way in parallel this central sprue filled up and it started going this way and then this is where it contacted or it, uh, 
yeah, the two the two flows of metal, that's where they touched. Um, and I have a feeling here it's too long and too thin to have stayed hot enough and it probably cooled off and started to deteriorate the surface finish. So, Alright, so check it out. There it is after polishing. You can clearly see between all of the the letters, I can't really get there, so you need either like a magnetic tumbler or a, um, a ultrasonic cleaner, which I have neither of. The other option is to design it so that it doesn't have such places where you can't reach, so I think I'm going to give that a try also to make a design with the letters by themselves, so without the, the ring continuing through the letters, but rather have all of this be hollow and a little bit thicker so that you don't have the opportunity for these kind of inclusion places where you can't reach with either sandpaper or the polisher. Alright, the second pour here, like I said, some of the parameters were a little bit different, but the process is more or less the same. Um, I'll shorten it down here, but basically one step is maybe missing in this whole thing and that's I don't remove the slag from the metal before I pour it in. I don't know how important that is. Um, whenever I've watched guys doing this, everybody kind of scoops a little bit of the of the metal out of the flask before pouring it. Um, I poured it already, yeah, at this point. So when I'm recording this, I've already done four or five castings, and I have never pulled the slag off, and it's used to work fine without it. Maybe it depends on the metal. I don't know. Time will tell. All right, guys, check it out. This is the second one. So what's different about this one is I changed the flask casting temperature. So the original one, or the first one, I did at 615 degrees. This one I cast at 650. Um, but then I was looking through my notes and I noticed I also changed the metal melt temperature. So the first one was melted at 1050 Celsius and this one was at 1100. So I had a bit more heat in the metal and I had more heat in the flask. And if you look at the casting, this one turned out way better than the first one. So the detail through the text is actually really, really good. There's no spots in the casting where it didn't fully fill the mold. And along the side here, you don't see at all where the metal contacted, so the two different flows of metal where it contacted. The surface finish is way better, the fill is way better. So I don't know if which of the two variables made the improvement, but nevertheless, it's better. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this one up and see where we end up. Band of the ring here. I did a really, really light sand, but no, I didn't try to remove all of the, the imperfections from the casting. So you can still see here there's a little bit on the inside there's a bit but generally it's not bad so i think the point with uh, this casting is you need to cast it a little bit oversize to give yourself a bit of extra material to work with and then sand it down to the dimension you want i'm quite happy with how the detail and the texture came out pretty nice hope that's in focus um for the ring, the reason it's black, so I, I oxidized it. This is just brass, it's not gold. So I oxidized the the ring to kind of make the text stand up, stand out. I think it looks pretty cool. So for a second, I actually nicked the B here a little bit with the Dremel when I was polishing it. But anyways, for a second test, really not bad. Pretty satisfied with that. 
Um, yeah, stick around. There will be more. Till next time. Ciao.